Happy Monday, everybody. Yay. Glasses up. I just want you to see. Do you see that thing on the bottom? Do you see it? Do you see it? Look. Mm -hmm. That's my fiber menders sliding down on the bottom. I have it mixed with the hot melt. These two. This is my, this is my trick for today. I am in the midst of a dirty fast. It's Dirty Fast Monday, <laughs> if anybody else is fasting like this today. And wow, I'll tell you what, this is going to be fun because at the very end of this is this big old gummy thing that tastes like cucumber uh, lime. Delicious. I love it. And it's a dirty fast. There's Sarah. Hi, Sarah and Diane. Come on in. There's Vanessa, my girl Vanessa and Jan. Everybody, come on in. It's so good to see everyone. Yeah, it's good. It's all good. It's Monday. And Monday is our motivational Monday day, right? Motivational Monday. So what is, you know, what are we going to be motivated about? Let me just say this. I can tell that you all are into Thanksgiving. We, we are just so, slow as molasses in the shop right now. Fine. But I just want to say to you, listen, <laughs> If you're going to take advantage of free shipping and you don't want any shipping charges on your supplements, get your orders in right now. That's number one. And number two is, let's just remember something here. If you are the one that everybody says, hey, what do you want this year? Tell them you want the gift of self-care. There's gift certificates on saving dinner. They can print them out and that'll make you happy, right? That's what I want. <laughs> Anyway, today is Monday, Motivational Monday, and there's Jenny. She's there, and Jeanette, I see all you guys rolling in, and it's good to see everyone. I took yesterday off, and sometimes it's Nunday, sometimes, and yesterday was a truly Nunday. You, you didn't even see me. <laughs> I had so much stuff going on, and I had a big list of things that I needed to do, and let me tell you how much I got done. Nothing, but I needed that, and you need it too. We need some downtime. I got in here and I was sitting at my computer and I was just like, man, my brain's just not working. But you know, I, yes, yeah, sometimes don't you just have to do that? You just have to say, that's enough of that. I'm just going to take a little time for myself. So I had a bath. I had just a, just a day to myself and it was fantastic. And as a matter of fact, you know what I'm making right now? This is highly advised for everybody to do. I am making myself a huge... Uh, list of self-care things that I can do. I get do my nails and you know I've, I mean I have like I have no nails now. Uh, do my nails um, just an extra flossing thing just lay in the tub go take us take a, a minute to go sit outside and just do a meditation. I, there are like I can make a list of probably I don't know 100 things you could probably do it too. I'm betting, but make yourself a, a, a take care of you list. This is what I can do for self care. These are the things that I can do, um, to, for, to be better. These are the things that I could do to excellently take care of myself. And, um, it just, it makes such a difference in the world. Sometimes we just need to shut it down for a minute, um, and just not do anything. And you know, Hey, that's what I did yesterday. But I'm back. Today is Motivational Monday and I am motivated. I've got things to do. You've got things to do. Let's talk about our quote of the week. It's Helen Keller. The most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And I just love that quote because you know what? That's where I feel things. I know that's where you feel it too, right? When I can feel it with my heart, when it's something that's just it's just a mood. It's just something. And when you can give that to other people and you can give that kind of love and that kind of feeling that you feel with your heart to other people, I would say that you're doing God's work, right? You're doing God's work. This is how we stir the pot up a little bit, ladies. We stir it up and we, we just become so much more than we ever were. That's why I always say we expand the, the borders of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. When we can do that, then there is so much more for us to offer others, isn't there? Empathy works that way too. It's really a beautiful thing. 
So Take Back Your Life, that workshop is still available. If you go to savingdinner.com slash, work, uh, slash journal, <laughs> you can find out how to do it. 90 days to take back your life. What do you think? I think it's a great thing. It's a huge thing. And um, I guess I need my notes because I made notes for you today on some Motivational Monday things. And um, don't forget that if you want your question answered, if you have a nutrition question or a cooking question or I don't know, whatever other kind of question, send it to me because I will answer questions. I do it every single Friday and everybody loves a good Q&A, don't you? So go to, um, just send your questions in to support at savingdinner.com and in the subject line, question for Leanne on Friday and it will get answered right here on Friday and we go as long as we need to go and we learn so much stuff, or I do too, because I love your questions. They are always interesting and um, fascinating. So please send them in early. Um, sometimes you guys send them in late on Thursday and I don't necessarily always get them. If you send them in during this part of the week, yay. The other thing is, what else do I need to tell you about? That's it, just uh, take a look at, at at uh, savingdinner.com, we have gift certificates. So if you want something and you're saying, oh, it's out of my budget, I can't get it. What about a gift, guys? Send a link to a spouse or something and say, hey, this is what I want. I like that. Um, yesterday was the last day for the sprint. That's at savingdinner.com slash sprint. People are still coming in and we're still helping them out. You know, it's all about habit, isn't it? That's part of the sprint thing is making a habit, but I'm going to tell you right now today how to create some habits that are really going to get the job done. Because I'm telling you, without having good habits in place, this is, this is what we talk about and Fly Lady talks about it. We talk about this, a morning and an evening routine. And I elevate it to a second level and say, it is a ritual. It is a ritual because it's sacred. It's important. This is how we bookend our lives every single day and we get things done. One of the new habits that I've started and I will do, yeah, maybe I'll just show you right now, I don't know. Maybe I'll show you if you can see it. Right behind me, do you see that? That's my little rebounder. I've also got a stepper. Um, it's called an exciser. I also have a little bike, a vibe, a vibe plate, and I have a yoga, yoga mat. And so you know what I've been doing? I got sick and tired of going up and down the stairs, you know, doing the sprints up and down the stairs. And so, you know what I started? Flights up and down the stairs, sorry. So, you know what I started doing? I started using this and I'll turn on five minutes of YouTube and just do it and get, get myself all pumped up. I'll do five minutes on the rebounder if I can hold on because those guys go fast. But you go to YouTube, put in five minute workout, no ads or whatever for your arm exercises or five minute workout for the rebounder or the bike or whatever. And it's like having a class. It was fantastic. So I've started doing that. And so today was arm day and I did the rebounder and then I'm setting alarms on my phone so that I can go get, keep getting the exercise in during the day. And do you know that you can do HIIT training for 20 seconds at a time, 20 seconds at a time. You go as hard and as fast as you can for 20 seconds and then just give yourself, then get off of, you know, the bike or the, the, you know, jogging in place or whatever it is that you're doing and be done with it. So 20 seconds at a time, you can get a lot done if you just do it 20 seconds at a time. You don't have to kill yourself. You just need to get it done. So that's why I really like that. Mary Ann's asking, why do you recommend the vibration plate and why? Okay, so the vibration plate is really good for shaking up your muscles. And there has, um, as a matter of fact, Dave Asprey is the one who told me about it. And I've got his vibe plate. It's expensive, not going to lie. I've had it for a number of years too. And I got out of the habit of using it, which is really dumb. But what the vibe plate does is it shakes up your muscles so much. So that if you're doing like push-ups on a vibe plate or tricep things or whatever on a vibe plate, your, your muscles are going to get like 30% more than it would normally get without the vibe plate. The other thing, it helps to shake things up a little bit inside. So that's really good for your lymph system. I say, why not? Right? Why not? And I'm really trying to get, for me, getting the exercise in makes everything else fall into place. 
You, you'll hear people all the time say, well, you don't just, you know, it's really 70% of it and 80% of it sometimes, it's all about the food. Yes, it is. But to me, when you're doing, when you're moving and you're exercising and you're doing something for yourself, first of all, you get the serotonin and the dopamine and everything else going inside of you, which it's your feel good hormones. There's number, that's number one. Number two, I believe, at least for me, that it tells me that we're all about taking care of ourselves. So if I'm going to be moving my body, I'm going to fuel it right, right? I just like that. And what I've been doing is beating myself up because I'd be like, oh, but if I should be doing 30 minutes, I should be doing 40 minutes. Nonsense. You can break it all down. And I read just recently the newest uh, research that I just read about doing a 20 second hit training. And I said, I'm in. And so now I have this one, two, three, four stations right behind me in, in my office that I can just go hit. And I just hit as soon as I'm done with this show, I'm going to go ahead and put my alarms back on and off I go. So I'm always going to be doing something and I've got little hand weights and all of that. So that is a habit that I've just started that I'm trying to incorporate in and trying to get done. And you don't have to get sweaty and awful and horrible so that you have to go take a shower and, and what have you. You just need to incorporate it into your day. And that makes fitness so much easier. And fitness and food go together by hand in hand. They're buddies. They're buddies. So if we can honor our body's need to move, and the things that I've been reading, you guys, are just horrific about people who don't move. When you sit on your can all day, they're calling that the new smoking. The new smoking. In other words, we're not meant to sit. We're meant to move. We have to honor this little, you know, human flesh machine that we've been given. It's the only one we've got. And if we're not moving, we're basically thumbing our nose at God and saying, so what? You know, what if, what if you couldn't move? What if you were sitting in a wheelchair or worse in a, you know, you couldn't move from the neck down? you've got the gift of movement, then honor it and do something with it and get your butt up out of the chair and do something. There you go. I'm done with that. Let's go to habits. Huh? How about eight habits, eight habits that you can start right now that you can build into your morning and evening routine, elevate it to the ritual that you can start doing right now today that are going to help change your mind about how hard this is. How about that? How about if we get rid of this whole idea of struggle and just start doing stuff that makes sense? Hmm? Habits make sense if you think about it. We do so many things right now on automatic pilot. We do so many things that are just habitual that sometimes even driving a car <laughs> and sometimes we get, get to our destination. We're like, oh man, I don't even remember driving here. But you know, once upon a time driving was like a really big deal. You got into the car and you were looking, here's the steering wheel, here's the accelerator, here's the brake pedal, here's how I have to do all of these things. It was hard at one point and now it's just automatic. Well, that's a habit. It's, it's something that we've learned to do. Habits are learned. Habits become habits because we put just a little bit of effort into them on a daily basis so that we can get them to the place of automatic pilot and tuck them into the back of our brain. Hmm? I love that idea. So what if we spent two minutes or less each day or like I'm doing, you know, that I'm, I am literally doing two minutes and, and my alarm gives me the bing noise and then I go and do something. I'll do the exerciser for, I'll just count 20 seconds as hard as I possibly can. Then I'll do another 20 seconds, then another one as hard as I possibly can. Can you do that? I love that. When you have the ability to just take that two minutes and to make it into something that's just a, a starting place, it happens. Don't beat yourself up that you can't go and do, you know, a big class at the gym that makes it go crazy. You know, that make the, the thing at the gym, you know, is nutty, right? You go to the gym and you're in the back of the room and they're doing this whole class for 60 minutes and you're just thinking, I am going to be lucky I don't pass out. Don't do that to yourself. Instead, just do two minutes of whatever it is that you can do. Makes sense, doesn't it? 
It makes sense to me. So start with two minutes, two minutes of something that you can do. Don't beat yourself up. Don't put on the pressure. I mean, go to, if you're going to go to the gym and this is what happens. And I've seen this so much. I'm not, I don't belong to a gym anymore, but when I belonged to a gym, it was like always at January. It was like, uh, it's going to be horrible because there's going to be a bazillion people in there and they're going to be practically passing out on the ellipticals, you know, because you'd see it. All the people come in, they get gym memberships, they all come in. And then in February, they're gone. And that's because they didn't develop a habit that was an incremental starter place habit. Now, what if they had just developed a habit where they'd gotten their stuff ready, part of their evening ritual was packing their gym bag, that they'd made an appointment in their Take Back Your Life journal that says, I am going to do this workout and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on... I'm going to do it on a regular basis. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this little habit for this long. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just going to do a habit. Actually, it's store. <laughs> Somebody's asking how to go to the store. Go to store.savingdinner.com. That's how you can get to the store. If somebody could post the link in there, I'd appreciate it. Um, but that'll take you to, the, to that place. Um, of getting a habit started. So you're going to the gym, then just get your gym clothes on for heaven's sakes. Get out, make a ha an appointment with yourself, and then get into the car and go. And then when you're there, don't start classes unless it's really super easy starter stuff. But if you haven't been to the gym in 30 years and you think that you're going to go in and do a, you know, some kind of a body weight class or whatever, it, that'll make you a little bit crazy, I promise you, because you'll be so sore you won't be able to move. You'll be so crazy um, and make yourself nutty, and, and you're going to be looking at it and thinking, why am I doing this? I'm never going to get to this place again. That was back then. This isn't now. Well, I'm saying go to the gym and do two minutes. Seriously, then get back in the car and leave. Yeah. And just make yourself a deal that I'm just going to do this. Don't sign up for the hard classes. Just do something or do what I'm doing. Get on YouTube. It's free. <laughs> I went two minute arm workout. I found something. And you know what? That's what I did today. Two minute arm workout. It took me till two minutes to get through this woman yapping around. And I was just like, come on, let's just get on with it. But I got it done. I did my arm workout and I got my rebounder workout and I did it just finding that. And so those are the things that we can do to create habit into our life and incorporate it in a way that doesn't make us nutty. How about that? This much is going to give us that much. Think about it. When we start like this, we start to get a little bit more in shape. We start to feel a little bit better about ourselves and we can do it. We can do it in the privacy of our own home. We don't have to have a whole bunch of people watching us. That's the whole most, you know what? I used to, true confessions. I would hardly be able to walk into a class because I didn't want to be judged. I, I would even, you know, you, and, and you know how it is when you walk into a class, you go to the very back with everybody else. Nobody else wants to be front and center. And sometimes for me, I had to drum up the courage, especially when I was doing Zumba, because I didn't look like that when I was doing Zumba. I looked like an embarrassing white girl doing Zumba. I just couldn't make my hips do that. <laughs> I just couldn't. But you know what? I did it and I showed up. And maybe it was too hard. Maybe it was whatever, but I did it. And you can do it on, you can do it on your YouTube. They've got everything on YouTube. I, I, I think I, you could almost do your own dentistry on YouTube. Don't, I'm not recommending that, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying YouTube is so fantastic. It's got everything you need. You don't have to go to a gym. And where I live at the top of a mountain where there's gravel roads and all kinds of stuff to get through, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's really nice. So I'm, I'm, that's my new habit. I'm enjoying it. I'm taking the time to do it. Do it. I double dog dare you. Start it. Two minutes. Two minutes. You know, if we master the art of just showing up, just showing up, then we everything else will fall into place. You know, this is exactly what it is. This is why we do morning routines and evening routines. 
we show up when we're doing our morning routine we're showing up when we're doing our evening routine we're showing up when they become rituals we've elevated them we've seen that they are they are sacred not to be broken right so that's the same thing with showing up that's the same thing with showing up and adding something new in habits deserve that kind of of elevation don't they they work for our advantage they make us feel better you know we can do that with anything like for example i had somebody who said you know the sprint's just too hard what can i do whatever and i said okay here you here you go this is it this is where we can start you right now today okay let's make some rules get some bone broth buy it make it i don't care whatever you want to do but go get some bone broth and i love the bone broth because you can get a meaningful uh, a mindful mug and it brings you back to center so that you can start having this this idea that I'm about to eat but before I eat I'm going to center myself and I'm going to put myself instead of on automatic pilot I'm going to be mindful in the moment my my meal is going to be mindful it's going to be meaningful the whole time that I eat so I'm not going to go crazy right a mindful mug so start with a mindful mug have 12 hours of, of fasting. Easy. Most of that's done while you're sleeping. You're just going to destroy your snacking habit of after dinner. Get rid of that and do 12 hours. Then hydrate yourself. And that's it. Just start there and see what happens. Just start there with those things. Start with hydration. Start with, with having a mindful mug every meal. And just make yourself a promise that you're not going to be a snacker after dinner. Snacking after dinner, that makes you wake up and you're all bloated and you look like you've been in a fight <laughs> the next morning. Your eyes are all swollen shut. Your face is all round. What's the point of snacking? Snacking's entertainment. Think about it for a minute. What is snacking? Is, are we snacking because we need the food? Oh my gosh, you haven't had a meal in, in, in weeks? What's snacking? Snacking's entertainment for your mouth. Snacking's stupid. Can we just talk about that for a minute? Do you agree with me on that? Is snacking stupid? Snacking stupid. Let's drop stupid. I don't like the idea of doing stupid things anymore. You know, go to bed at a decent hour. Staying up all late because whatever, that's stupid. It makes you feel like crap the next day. Snacking, stupid. Why do we snack? Why do we why are we eating when we don't need to eat? Think about how stupid snacking is, right? Let's get rid of that one. Those are bad habits that need to go. Get staying up until all hours, that's a bad habit that needs to go. Drinking endless coffee all day and then not being able to sleep at night, bad habit that needs to go. I mean, we do so many bad habits and then we're wondering, "Why can't we, you know, why can't I fix this up?" We got to look at it. You got to look at it. Part of a good habit thing is to analyze what the heck is going on in the first place and think, you know, I've got some bad habits that need replacing, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I mean, my bad habit has been like, I, I'm thinking, well, I don't have time for this. That is a bad habit. Anytime you say, I don't have time, bad habit, bad habit, bad habit. No, you haven't made time. Let's correct that, you know, check that box. You haven't made the time to do the things that you need to do. You haven't made the time for your priorities. And if you're going to say, my priority is this and my priority is that, well, it darn well better show up in your day. You better have it in your habits, you know. You better have it in your morning routine and your evening routine. You better elevate them up to rituals so that you just will not break that ritual. It's sacred. It's become a part of who you are. We can do that. You know, if we can learn how to drive, you know, a, a 6,000 pound car barreling down the highway with all these other cars around us and it's like no big deal, why can't we think that we can add something healthy into our lives on a daily basis and just do it? Hmm? Think about it for a minute. How crazy are we? We just, we don't see the importance of taking care of ourselves until it's too late, you know? And I'm not talking about, you know, having to 
shop and plus size stores or any of that other kind of stuff. I'm just talking about how we, we take our priorities, we throw them away and say we don't have time for it until we're in this place of going, oh my gosh, how did that happen? I, I was in that place. I was in that place where I was with Marla and she, we went to the Lane Bryant store so I could finally get some clothes. I, I was unwilling to look at the fact that I needed plus size clothes. This is back in 2000, whatever it was. I don't even remember. 2002, maybe. And we went and we bought a bunch of clothes. That was my start of my body clutter journey. You know why? Because I was honest with myself finally. And that's what habits do. They bring you to the place of honesty. Habits help you to form what's going on in your life. They help you to make your priorities concrete. They happen. This is how you, you're, when you talk about being so spiritual and so this, that, and the other thing, well, guess what? You're not, if you're not having a spiritual practice, you got to take the time to pray and to meditate and to read and to journal. You, you can't do these things. You can't be this way unless it's a part of your life on a daily basis. That's where habits come in. Habits are brilliant. At doing that for us. Habits help us to become the best version of ourselves. Not just talkers, but walkers too. Who we are shows up in what we do, not what we say. You've heard me say that a bazillion times. Marla's quoted me on that. That's my favorite thing because I, you know what? You know how I came up with that saying? I came up with it because I used it on myself. <laughs> I needed it for myself. I can't be a nutritionist if I don't practice good nutrition, can I? I? I proved that for years. Fat nutritionist, 237 pounds. There was a little bit of an incongruency here, wasn't there? <laughs> now, I am not perfect right now, but I'll tell you what, I am darn good and healthy. I, I'd love to be in my size six jeans, not right yet. I am. I'm in my size tens. I'm not in the twelves anymore. But you know what? I am a work in progress. I am working, working, working toward it. Every single day, I do something that will habitually hold my ground, that helps me to hold my integrity ground. You lose your integrity along the way if you're not doing what you say that, you're do, that you are. You lose your integrity. You, you, you lose your sense of self, and you just think you're a loser, you know? I don't want you to think you're a loser. You're not a loser. You're fantastic. You just need to practice your fantasticness. <laughs> we practice our fantasticness with our habits, with our daily thing. And we do it in the morning. We do it in the evening. And sometimes we bring it in between. We piggyback as much as we can. We're constantly looking at our habits. Are they serving us? Are they serving our families? Are we doing the things that are building the, our lives the way we want it? Is this creating a life that I want to lead? You get one life, guys. And we are how many days away <laughs> till the new year? Do you want to just hastily write out some New Year's resolutions that you know you're going to forget about in two weeks? Or do you really want to get in there and do something that's going to create the life that you want, with the habits that you want, with a life that you're proud of, with accomplishment, with achievement, with, with something that says, look, I showed up. This is my life. I want you to find that for yourself. And you can find that. And let me just say this. This is so important. And write this down. Just show up. And don't ask how. Just know that for your why is enough. Your hows always fall into place. They always fall into place, you guys. That is a promise. That's not me. That's not, that's not my brilliance. This is brilliance from every single thinker that has ever thought a good thought. If you just show up and just start, everything will fall into place. Because I'm telling you right now, how isn't important. The how always shows up in ways you don't expect. It always does. 
I told you the story about my how was I needed to support my family. And I thought it was a different way than I was because I was a freelance writer. It turned out to be saving dinner. Wow, what a blessing. And you know what else? It got to, I had a mission. It was no longer, I needed to write all this stuff. Now I had a mission. I was bringing families back to the dinner table. It was feeding people healthfully and I, would, I could help them. I could, show, I could share my cooking knowledge. I could share my nutrition knowledge. It all came together. But at the time, I didn't know how. I didn't even have the idea for saving dinner. I didn't even have that idea. All I knew was each day I had to do it a little bit better. And I worked for it every single day. And that's all I'm saying to you. Work for it every single day. Be, show up show up, make your morning routine, make your evening routine, get them elevated to the place of ritual and watch what happens. And you know, there's the Goldilocks rule. You know about the Goldilocks rule, right? Sometimes the bed's too hard. Sometimes it's too soft, but there in the middle, there's the just right bed. And this is how we have to look and hold our, our little routines every morning or our evening routines, or rituals, or whatever you want to call them. I don't care. But your habits, we hold them with a loose hand a little bit, a little bit. And we look, Are the, is it too hard? Am I making it too hard? Or am I being too easy on myself? Where's that middle place where it's just right? Because sometimes they need to be looked at, they need to be readjusted, and they need to be redone. Add a little bit more time to that workout, Leanne. (laughs) You know, add a little more frequency. Add whatever it is that you need in order to make it just right. And for heaven's sakes, can we all agree on this? And I want to see some hearts go up on this. Can we agree that we are going to banish forever and ever, amen, this all or nothing attitude? Come on. You know is going to do it absolutely right every single time. Who? Anyone? Anyone out there? We're looking for you perfect people. Come on, they don't exist, guys. They just don't exist. You know what I've noticed? I have noticed that this is the this is the this is the success formula. That you make yourself a deal. Let's say you break you break it down and let's just say you have like a big, huge freaking fail. It's just been a fail. You've gone to a restaurant and you've eaten so much pasta. You feel like a big ravioli yourself, (laughs) completely stuffed. And then that, that wasn't enough. You had a cocktail beforehand. You indulged in some appetizers and then you had, you know, wine with dinner. And then here comes the dessert tiramisu for the win. (laughs) <laughs> and you just, you just, you rolled out of that restaurant like a round ravioli. You rolled out. Can we just agree that we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and, and it just happened, so what? That we don't do something twice in a row. Twice in a row is a big mistake. If we just say, okay, th- well, that's it. I just blew it, so therefore, you know, I'm just going to wait till the holidays are over. Mm-mm. Are you going to wait till the holidays are over? Are you going to wait till you got the seven pounds more to lose? Are you going to wait until you really feel like crap? Or are you going to just say, you know what, two days in a row, two, once was enough. I give today, this is what I'm going to do. This is what my day is going to look like. This is how I'm going to plan it. This is how long my fasting is going to go for. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hydrate. I'm going to have my mindful mug. I'm going to do the things that I know that are going to move make me feel better about myself. Because I'm telling you, if you keep doing the same thing that you know didn't work, it's gonna, it's just gonna take all the hard work you've ever done and just throw it all away. But if you can just look at it like, okay, that was a huge fail, that was, that was no good, but I'm not gonna do it twice in a row. Make a deal with yourself, I'm not gonna do that. Because the old way, The way that we do it, we perfectionists do it, recovering perfectionist right here, is we throw the baby out with the bathwater and we say, well, you know, since that happened, here we go. 
right down that slide into depression, into weight gain, into feeling like garbage because we feel like the all or nothing is the way we need to go. We're either all in or we're all out. Well, I'm going to say this to you. You're already all in, okay? You're already all in. You're already deciding this is, I want better for my life. And if you mess it up, you mess it up. One meal, one meal. Don't let it be two in a row. One is enough. One's enough to say, okay, I'm going to give myself that pass and I'm going to get up on that horse and let's ride him, cowboy. Let's do this. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you allow and keep giving yourself the grit, that kind of grace and a pass, you are going to regret it in a big time way. So don't do that. Give yourself a rule. Okay, I messed up, but now I'm going to go back on it. And just remember this, and I, I talked about this, you know, when in, in the Take Back Your Life um, webinar um, workshop, and that is that we're always chiseling away. We're chiseling away. Remember the the I was talking to you about David, you know, about the statue of David that Michelangelo had had made. I mean, it, it, do you know that that three other artists had rejected that big slab of marble because they just couldn't see the vision of it? But Michelangelo did. And what did he have to do? He kept chipping away, chipping away, and chipping away until there was a masterpiece. And that's what habit is. That's what anything that we work hard for is. Do you understand that? We can do it. We can do this every single day. Chip, 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 chip. And that is how we reveal the masterpiece of our lives. And I want you to have that. I want you to have a masterpiece for our life. And we do this with our habits. And we do it with our, our rituals and our morning and our evening rituals. And we look at them and we, re, we evaluate them and we are constantly making them better. Not because we're perfectionists, but because we're seeking excellence in everything that we do. That's it. That's how we get through our lives. That's how we make it so that we're not just biding our time, but we're doing something that's quality and it makes our life worth living. It truly does. Good habits are the bedrock. The bedrock, because that's how your life shows up. And that's how your priorities show up in what you do, not what you say. So with that... I will see you tomorrow for uh, Tuesday's tip. Yes, indeed, Tuesday's tip. And don't forget, if you need a gift certificate or something, just go grab it, store.savingdinner.com. Go grab a gift certificate and tell somebody in your family that you love that you want something cool from Saving Dinner Shop because we are those cool people. And you know you want something. Peace out, guys. I appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow.